Hey everybody, Carla with Carla's Clever Crafts again. Today we're going to be making a Valentine's Day wreath with this very cute, adorable little gnome. We got this at the Dollar Tree, so $1.25. It's very super cute. Um, I wanted to do a couple reminders. I'm going to load my comments, so if anybody gets one, I can see any questions and see who's watching me. Um, if you can, it really helps me if you can like and share this video. And if you're not already following my page, go ahead and go over to Carla's Clever Crafts, all spelled with a K, on Facebook. And follow my page and you'll get notifications then of when I go live. And if you catch this on YouTube later, um, do the same thing if you would. Like and share it. It helps you to find it later. Um, if you want to make this wreath for yourself or as a gift for somebody, or if you have a business and, and you want to make one and try to sell it, I do sell this wreath in my Etsy shop. I only have one sign left after this one. This one is for a customer um, that we're making tonight, so there will only be one of these available after tonight. And then also very excited about the drawing that I'm going to be having. Up. On, uh, as most of you know, and if you don't, go to my business page, this wreath up above my head. I'm doing a giveaway. It's a 30 inch Valentine's Day wreath. It says, You hold the key to my heart, and it has a big key across underneath of the heart sign, and it's full of ornaments and roses and hearts and um, nice little sprays coming out to give it additional embellishment. You can win that for free, including the shipping, if you go over to Carlos Clever Crafts, my business page, find the giveaway post, just scroll down until you see the post. You like and share that post, follow my page, and comment underneath of the post that you've done those things, and you're automatically entered. I also wanted to mention, don't forget, that we will be doing the drawing um, on my live video Saturday at 6.30 p.m., so if you want to watch live the drawing being conducted and hear the winner announced you can do that just go to my page on uh, saturday and i'll be going live at 6 30. we'll be making a wreath an easter wreath with a wooden cross that day and then we'll also be doing the drawing okay so my comments my computer froze up i'm not going to be able to get those just yet but we'll go ahead and start move this down just a little bit okay Again, I'm using the 14 inch wire form from the Dollar Tree for this wreath. We, I have wired it. We're going to be doing the cruffle method um, with applying our deco mesh. So I have wired it for that. To wire it for the cruffle method, um, I do six ties on the inside two rings and 12 on the outside two rings. And the way I determine is where to place them is in between each of these two crossbars is considered a section. So on the inside two rings, I go right in the middle of the section on the inside two bars. And then I come out and place one between the first pipe cleaner in the middle and the section bar. I could try to go about halfway to place my second one. Do the same thing on the opposite side. That gives you three per section. And you do that all the way around the frame. Now we're not going to be using this green. I just wanted to use that for demonstration because our sign is red and white. So we're going to use one that I have wired with red pipe cleaners. And to save us some time tonight, I've also started applying the deco mesh, saves some spaces to show you how I did that, and also some of the ribbon tails. And I will explain all of this to you. I also wanted to talk tonight a little bit about about how I um, design my wreaths, how I choose my ribbons, my meshes, um, how I desert, determine where to place each one. So um, what I usually start with is I find a cute little sign that either I love or I think my customers will love. This guy happens to be both. I love him, I love the little gnomes, and they're very popular with my customer base. Um, so I got this, and then a lot of times when I do a gnome wreath, I use gnome ribbon um, on the wreath um, and coordinate that with my sign. This year, my gnome ribbon, my gnome Valentine's Day ribbon, had a lot of pink in it. 
and I usually try to keep my wreaths to a three collar pattern. I try to stick with three basic collars and in this case I, it was red and black and white. My sign, I chose those colors because my sign he has little black boots, there's some black outlining um, throughout his beard and then the majority of the sign is red and white. So that's how I typically choose my collars. I do that based off of my sign. From there um, I select which deco mesh I want to use and I first chose, I wanted to um, keep an even amount of the red and white in the background so I chose to do two different colors of mesh on my base on the bottom and I chose this really pretty metallic white to use and then I'm alternating that every other pipe cleaner with this real pretty metallic red. And so now I have those two. And I, when I do my wreaths, I do one layer of mesh on the bottom, a layer of ribbons, and then another layer of mesh. So then I had to decide if I wanted to continue with these two meshes for my top row or if I wanted to select a different mesh. And I had this really pretty poly burlap mesh that is red and white combined and I thought that this would be perfect um, to use around my gnome primarily because the gnome he does have some glitzy glitter up here on his hat that matches the the metallic mesh I'm using but he also has a lot of just base red and white in him so I thought this would look really cute or to frame around him by using it on that top layer of mesh and after I decide which meshes I do want to use, I go back to my sign and I usually pick out what I want to be my most prominent ribbon first. And in this case, I selected, I was looking of course for a ribbon that was all, you know, had red, black, and white, all three of my collars in it, because I usually like my most prominent ribbon to, to have all three of the collars that I'm gonna be using in the overall mesh, or I'm sorry, overall wreath. And so I selected this really cute it's got a black background with a red glitter edge and it says love and it has hearts and then if you notice it has several different patterns um, in the letters there's stripes there's plaid there's polka dots and I think that covers them so this got this different pattern and then of course it has the hearts all over around in the background in the black area so I then, now I've picked a, a ribbon that matches my mesh and my sign very well. So then from there, I use both my primary ribbon and my sign and choose my other ribbon tails that I'm gonna use to match and coordinate and bring the whole thing together. So in this case, um, he has some dots on his hat up here, some polka dots. And then there's also polka dots in my primary ribbon. So I chose to use a red and white polka dot with as one of my ribbon tails. And that is the reason for that. And then his hat also has some stripes and my primary ribbon has stripes. So that made it easy for me to choose. My next ribbon is gonna be red and white striped. Now this is a diagonal pattern, so is the one in the hearts here. It doesn't have to be exact, the stripes will coordinate even if it's not diagonal. And then to go with that, um, because I already have three patterns, I wanted to put a nice solid with it to create a contrast. And so that is how, when I'm designing my signs, that's the basic process that I use to determine what I'm going to put on my wreath. I hadn't covered that yet, so I thought it would be a good good time to do that tonight. On this wreath, um, I did do, on the base layer, I did do my six inch ribbon tails. I've covered that in prior videos. Um, a lot of crafters, wreath makers, um, use all 12 inch ribbons over their whole entire wreath, and that's fine, it looks beautiful, it's full, it's got lots of ribbon. But what I found is that when I would place in full pieces all the way around with two in each pipe cleaner layered on top of one another, 
one, you couldn't see any of my mesh underneath, and two, these little ribbon tails would get lost. You know, half of the ribbon that I was placing on there would be hidden underneath of other ribbons and you couldn't see them. So I use, on the bottom, I use three six inch pieces and then I of uh, two patterns. In this case, I use the solid, six inch piece of the solid and the polka dot. And then of all of the rest of them, the other two patterns, I use six 12 inch pieces of each. So the love and the stripe, there's six 12 inch pieces on the bottom. And then six, in addition to the six inch pieces, there'll be six 12 inch pieces of the red and the polka dot. And I'll go over how we're gonna place those in there um, after I show you how we do the cruffle method of the rush, rush, uh, mesh and place it on the bottom. Move a couple things over out of my way. If anybody has any questions about any of that, how I design or choose my collars or my patterns, um, just leave me a comment and let me know. My computer's not frozen now, so I'm going to try to pull up comments. I think I went too far. There it is. Okay. So, doing the cruffle method, um, cruffle is something somebody else created. I learned it through watching hundreds of YouTube videos. Um, it basically, um, there's, there's two methods um, called a curl, and then there's another method called a ruffle. So a curl, I'll just go ahead and show you, show you this, is you just start rolling it at the end and roll it all the way. You're making a curl is, is what that process consists of. And usually um, people who do curls cut their pieces um, to 10 to 12 inches long if they're using a 10 inch wide mess, me uh, mesh. Okay, so that's a curl. And then if we're doing just a ruffle, we would turn this over face down, leaving it flat. And we would start gathering at the edge here and just ruffle it back towards us. So that is how you create a ruffle. So that is what a ruffle looks like. Now somebody, very smart, realized that this ruffle, although it's very pretty when you place it in your wreath, leaves these cut edges open and subject to fraying and coming apart and messing up your final wreath. So they created the curl, a, a, a method that combines the curl with the ruffle and so that is the design that I prefer to use um, I cut my mesh pieces 16 inches to 17 inches long for this method some people cut them much longer but the length is up to you and the longer the fuller your wreath will be and you just roll it over and then two three four to make just a nice little curl on the end and then you turn it around clip away from you and do the same thing on the other end. Fold it over, use your pinkies to hold your ends down so that they stay tucked in when you're rolling. And then two, three, four. Now you have a curl at each end. Turn it over so your curls are face down and now you're gonna do the ruffling process in the middle between those two curls. And that's how they came up with the name Cruffle. So now we have basically the same kind of effect, maybe a little prettier because this now looks like a bow, um, but our ends are underneath. They're, the cut edges are underneath and protected from fraying and getting messed up. So I've already done some of the mesh and ribbon, so I'm just gonna come into my next pipe cleaner here, pull it up and separate it out. We're gonna place these for the bottom layer we're going to put the finished edge to the inside and the opposite finished edge to the outside. And just put it in there, pull it tight, and give it a couple good twists. Laying our mesh in this way will give us an overall wreath design. The size will be 24 inches in diameter. So 24 inches across, 24 inches up and down. 
Okay, and so I did the white, so next is the red. We're just going to redo that process all the way around the base. You will do, um, we have 12 ties on the outside, two rings, so you will do 12 of these for the first layer of your mesh. Now I did some of them before we started, so I only have two more left to do. But if you need to see me do the cruffle process again, I will be doing that again when we do the top layer of the mesh. So you'll actually like catch some more of that in this video. There, I think that's a better view. Okay. Hi, honey. Right. And then when we're placing our mesh in, when we start getting close to the mesh on the other side, Make sure the piece you're putting in, you put it underneath of the mesh that's on the opposite side. So just pull that up and place this under it, this edge under it. And if you're watching, shoot me a comment to let me know that you're there. Okay, we've got one more. Let me spread this out so you can see. Two, three, four. I just kind of fold it over four times. It gives me a nice curl and keeps those edges under. Fold it over and I use my pinkies. Keep this down. Two, three, four. And when you're rolling, you might notice that one of your ends sticks out like that. That's okay, because when you get done with the whole process, it will either go in on its own, or you can just tuck it in. Sometimes, like when you're using a center mesh, like this metallic white, it will do that. Scrunch it down the middle, take your clip off, and put it in your pipe cleaner. Now in this case, that piece did not fit itself, so I'm going to tuck it in when I get it placed on the wreath frame. And just pull it down. This mesh kind of sticks to itself, so it will stay down in there once I push it down in. And then this piece is over top of that, so it's going to protect it some also. Make sure that this, this mesh on the opposite side is out laying over the one that you just put in. And this is what your mesh will look like after you layer all that first row in. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the ribbon tails. I've got one here that keeps trying to hide on me. I have to adjust it. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit ago about the six inch pieces. And the way that I do my base ribbons so that I can kind of have all of them showing is my two main pattern pieces, I put the six inch pieces under it. So you're gonna start with a six inch polka dot and then you're gonna do a six inch solid. And then in your next pipe cleaner, you're gonna to go to the 12 inch. So you do a 12 inch polka dot and a 12 inch solid. If I turn it around this way, you can, you can see that better. So I have the six inch polka dot. I have the six inch solid, the 12 inch polka dot, and a 12 inch solid. Then I come in and I lay, in this case, I chose to put the black with the polka dots and the design over top of the polka dot pattern. And I chose to put the stripes over the solid and you could do that the opposite way just whatever looks most appealing to your eye that was just the way I chose to match them up so we're going to do that all the way around our wreath we're going to I left several open on this side that we can finish putting in the 6 and 12 inch pieces and then we're going to go back around and layer in the rest of the stripe and the love okay so we're over here And we've put in our six inch solid red. So we're gonna now in this one put a 12 inch polka dot. To put in our ribbons, I just lay them flat, scrunch down the middle, and V it back towards me. 
so it looks like this. Being it back towards us helps it to lay the way that we want it to once we place it in the wreath. Then we just put it in our pipe cleaner, the next one, and squeeze it tight and give it several good twists. Here I twist three to four times. And then we're not gonna put anything else in this pipe cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip off the extra. And then I take my pipe cleaner and push it down inside and I give it a good squeeze so that it holds my ribbon secure. Finally, I just fluff out my ribbon curl my little ends under so it kind of wraps around the mesh and lays the way that I want it to. And now that we've done the 12 inch polka dot, our next one will be the 12 inch solid. I know this is a little bit confusing, so if anybody has any questions, you know, just put them in the comments and let me know. I did some of this ahead of time just to try to make it a little bit faster for us. So please, if you have any questions about what I had already done or if you're confused, you know, just either leave me a comment or if you're not comfortable with that, you can send me a message as well and I will definitely get back to you. Okay. Now we've done the 12 inch polka dot, 12 inch solid. Now we're back to the six inch. We're gonna do a six inch polka dot because that's the pattern that we need next. We're just rotating the pattern, solid then polka dot, solid then polka dot. Also, um, I forgot to mention, we dovetail the ends, but only one end of the six inch pieces. So when you're scrunching the six inch piece, scrunch on the flat edge, not the dovetailed edge. Fluff your ribbon out, curl the edge under, and get your next pipe cleaner ready. Okay, so we did two 12 inches, then we did a six inch polka dot, and now we're gonna do a six inch red. Same thing, we're gonna scrunch it on the flat edge. And stick it in our next pipe cleaner. Oh, and one thing that I wanted to mention that I forgot to about color choice um, and designing, I'll show you and talk to you about it. When I'm alternating, when my mesh on the bottom is not all the same color, I also select where to place my ribbon tails based on the color or mesh underneath. So in this case, we're using red and white, and I have a red and white polka dot ribbon, and then I have a solid red ribbon. If I chose to do the solid, it's got like a shiny metallic look to it, and I put it over top of this red metallic mesh, it would kind of get lost in the design. You, it would still be there, you would still see it slightly, but it would not be very prominent. So for that reason, I choose to put the red polka dot ribbon on the red and the solid red on the white. So that's just something else to consider if you're designing your own wreath. Okay, so now we're going to do a 12 inch polka dot. And that will actually be our last one because I've already placed in the 12 inch solid. Again, being it back towards you just so it lays nicely in your wreath, in your mesh. Not putting anything else in the pipe cleaners where the 12 inch pieces of mesh are so I'm going to clip that off and go ahead and get that out of my way be careful not to cut your mesh when you're cutting off your pipe cleaners and then push it down in and squeeze okay and now we're ready we still have to put the rest of our love ribbon and our striped ribbon over top of the six inch pieces that we laid in. So if you use a 12 inch piece where I have the six inch pieces, you get a V effect. So 
here, my six inch pieces are coming straight out. Both of them are laying straight out. But where I have a 12 inch piece, it's V'd. We have a V. So if I V this ribbon, and then I lay it over a 12 inch piece, and then I keep doing that all the way around, that's what I mean by most of my ribbon gets covered up. So you don't see all of the nice patterns and colors and things that you've selected to show on your wreath. So when I do a six inch piece and it comes straight out and I do a V, then my V lays on the opposite sides of the straight piece and you can see all three pieces of the ribbon. And then you can also see the mesh underneath in the areas where I only use the one 12 inch piece. I'm hoping that makes sense to everybody. If not, be sure to let me know. Now you'll see some of my wreath designs I do use all 12 inch pieces. Um, it just varies. Um, when I first started doing these, that's, that's the way that I learned to do it from watching other people was by using all 12 inch pieces. So um, that is the way I did it for a long time. And then I always hated that I felt like I was wasting so much ribbon. And so then I started doing this design with the six inch pieces so that all of my ribbon would be visible. Okay, and I'll show you a little bit up close so you can see this piece is straight out. This is bead on both sides. You can see all three, and you can also still see the red on this side, and then you'll be able to see, we're gonna do the polka dot, and even though there's gonna be a little overlapping here, you're still gonna see all of it. You'll still see all of the patterns. Now we need a stripe. Lay it flat, find your middle. One way you can find your middle, if you're not comfortable with just guessing, is fold your ribbon in half, crease it slightly, and then when you open it up, you have a nice little line there. You can just scrunch down the middle, pull it back to you, make your V and then place it in so that each side of the V lays on either side of the red piece we put in the middle. Okay, and we're done with these two at this point, so we can go ahead and snip them off and tuck them in and squeeze, and then fluff out our ribbon tails. Okay. And now, even though we have a little bit of overlapping right here in this area, you can still see the stripes, you can still see, let pull this out, you can still see the 100 a little bit, but then for the rest of this section, you can see all of the patterns. That is the only overlapping that we get with this design. If you did 12 inch pieces everywhere, you would have tons of overlapping, see none of the mesh underneath, and lose a lot of your ribbon because it would be covered entirely. Okay, so now we need to go around to where our other six inch pieces are, which are here and here. Oh, I cut that, cut that off prematurely. So I'm going to have to open that back up to put in my other piece. That's a mistake I make sometimes, more times than I like to admit. So I'm just going to open that pipe cleaner up lay out my ribbon, scrunch down the middle, V it back towards me, and place it in the very small ends that I've left myself, and twist it very well. You still get a hold of those and give it a nice twist, even if you make that mistake. Okay, now pull my piece back out straight, and then fluff my love ribbon so that it V's around that other piece of ribbon. Curl the edges so they curl down over my mesh. And then we have one more piece of ribbon for the bottom. And yesterday in my live video, I mentioned that I may do a couple videos today 
I'm not sure that I'm going to actually get that done because once I finish this video, um, I'm going to start working on getting the names for the drawing ready and um, make sure that I know how to use the site that I'm going to use to do the random drawing. So um, unless that goes really quick for me, I probably won't do any more lives today. And then I cut this one off prematurely too, so open it up, make sure your ribbon is in there good, and twist it really good. Give it, make it really tight, and then push it back down. Good thing about making these wreaths is any mistake you do, you can fix it. If I wasn't able to open that back up and put my ribbon in, I could always just take that pipe finger off completely, put a new one on, and fix my mistake. It'll only take me a minute or two. Okay, so now we're ready to do our second layer of mesh. This is what it looks like so far. With our design around the outside. Okay. And then when we wired the frame, remember I told you there were six, six pipe cleaners on the inside, two rings. We're now going to place our second met, layer of mesh on those pipe cleaners. But to do so, we want to go in between the mesh and pull these pipe cleaners to the outside. We want to continue building our wreath up around the outside. So reach in between and just pull them out to the outside. Do that all the way around for all six. And I've mentioned before, but in case you're watching one, you know this video for the first time and haven't seen my other videos, um, it, at this stage it is thin. You can still see the wire, it's particularly because this metallic white mesh we used is kind of thin and see-through. But do not worry about that if you're making this for yourself because by the time you layer, layer on the second layer of mesh and another layer of ribbon tails, you will not be able to see the frame at all. You'll have full coverage and your wreath will be about five to six inches thick. That's one thing the Cruffle Method also does is it gives you more fullness, more thickness on your overall design. Um, whereas the ruffle method is kind of flat. Okay. So, as I promised earlier, we're going to do the cruffle method again. We have six pipe cleaners that we pulled from the inside to the outside. So, we're going to do six pieces of this mesh. It is cut to 16 to 17 inches, just like the ones on the bottom. And we're going to do the, cr the cruffle the exact same way. So we're going to fold over this edge, use our pinkies to keep those ends down, and then two, three, four. Now, at this, you know, when you're doing these curls on the end, if you wanted to roll it a little more than that, you could. If you wanted to roll it a little less than that, you could. Um, I came to the conclusion that the four. Um, gives me the best result to keep my ends all tucked in and keep me from having fraying. Four. And then also if you're going to roll it more, you want to make sure you're leaving you some space in the middle here to do your cruffling. So if you're going to roll more on the ends, make sure you cut your pieces a little bit longer than 16 to 17 inches. Let's cruffle up the middle. This poly burlap mat mesh is very thick. Um, and gives it's very nice. It gives a very nice contrast on your wreath to your other other elements. Okay, so now we're going to open up our first pipe cleaner. This time, instead of placing the mesh with the finished edge to the inside and outside, we're going to turn that. It's going to be like we're placing a bow on our wreath, and we're going to put it in with the finished edges to the right and to the left. you're going to twist your pipe cleaner. Do not pull too tightly here because you do not want to lose this layer of mesh down inside of the rest of your elements that you placed in the bottom layer. And just adjust it. 
kind of so that it looks like a bow and you're ready to go to your next one. Same process. Your cruffle. Now this poly burlap, you will have pieces to come off of that. Um, again, it won't affect your, your end result or your overall design because we're going to tuck these edges under and keep them from fraying more. This kind of mesh there, you want, you want to work with minimally. Um, the more you work with it, the more it will fray. So it's very thick and heavy and gives you good coverage and a nice design, but it will fray on you if you handle it too much. Turn it over, scrunch down the middle, and pinch the two sides together, take your clip off, and you have a nice little bow. We're going to put that in the very next pipe cleaner. Again, don't pull too tightly. You'll lose your bow form, your bow shape, and it'll sink down into your other ribbons and mesh. And then I like to just kind of lay my edges of each piece next to one another there. And then I go to my next one. Hey, Patricia, thank you so much for sharing. I'm so grateful to you for your help. Crunching it down the middle and doing the same thing. After this one, we have three more to go. Once you um, do this design several times, um, you do get faster and faster at it. Um, I go slower on the videos because I'm doing the explanation and then also I want to make sure that everybody can see what I'm doing. Um, but with time and practice, you, you will get much faster. And again, I'm just straightening it up. You can pull your edges out, line them up next to each other. Valentine's Day is getting really close, almost near the end of designing. I'm not making any new designs for Valentine's Day at this point, only designs for customer orders. Um, I do have lots of other designs on my Etsy page, and I have several of them also on my Facebook page, not all of them though. So if you wanted to check out my other designs for Valentine's Day, you could go to my Etsy page for that. I think the link should be on the live video to my Etsy. If it is not, let me know. I'll add it in the comments when the live is over. I forgot to mention where I got my materials. The white metallic mesh came from Hobby Lobby. Um, I think that is uh, one that they carry year round. It's not holiday specific. And then the poly burlap and the red metallic both came from Craft Outlet. The black love ribbon came from Craft Outlet as well, as well as the red and white striped ribbon. They have very good quality ribbon. I order a lot of my ribbons from there. Um, the red polka dot, red and white polka dot, Craft Outlet sells that. Um, but I got mine at Walmart during the holidays. And then the solid red is actually um, from Sam's. They had that during Christmas time. Okay, so now we have all of these pieces of mesh laid in here and we are ready to 
move on to our top layer of ribbon tails. Just to show you what I was talking about now, you cannot see, even before we place on those last ribbon tails, you cannot see down through there to the frame. We've got nice coverage, really beautiful contrast. Okay, get ready to put these three, these, I'm sorry, six sets of ribbon tails on the top. So for the top layer of ribbon, we're gonna use them the same ones and you're going to need three 12 inch pieces of each design. So three of the striped, three of the love, three of the polka dot, and three of the solid. And I mentioned Sam's earlier. I should tell everybody, if you guys are, if you want to get started in making wreaths, um, Sam's has their spring ribbon out right now. Um, they have it online and in the stores. Um, I know that in the stores it's selling very fast. Um, it's the best price ribbon I've ever found at Sam's. You get 50 yard rolls for $7.68. And they have lots of solid colors, some patterns. They have some out that's patriotic for the 4th of July. Um, they have lemons, limes, all kinds of things that you know can work for spring and summer um, but but those do sell quickly so if you're interested in getting you some ribbon there to get you started I recommend you go as soon as you can now they have it online but the drawback to buying it online is that they sell it in six roll sets so you still get that really good price but you've got to buy buy six of them the way that they have them paired up I prefer to go select my own so I get what I need and not, not have to purchase the ones that I don't necessarily need. Okay, I was blabbing and forgot to explain how I did that. Our, our Sam's was sold out of the lemons and limes. The lady at the door told us that there was a lady just in front of me who, um, when she checked her out, checked her items as she was leaving, she had the last of the lemon and lime ribbon in her cart. <laughs> so, but I, I was able to still get it. I just ordered it online and, and got the few extra rolls of ribbon with it, but I'll, I'll use them. Okay, so to do the top layer, we're not making a V. We are going to actually make an X. We're gonna scrunch from the, the V down here at the bottom to the V up here at the top. My V was a little off, so I'm gonna straighten that up a little bit. And just scrunch it from one V point to the other, pinch it together until you get a nice little X. And then you lay it in to the pipe cleaner, still in the X shape, and twist it in there pretty tight, pretty good. Don't pull it too tight because you don't want to cause it all to sink into the rest of the wreath. Twist several times so it's secure. Clip off the end of your pipe cleaner again because we're now done with that one, and we're going to push it to the inside. Then fluff up your ribbons. I start down close to where the pipe cleaner is when I'm fluffing. Push that up and then curl my edge out. Now sometimes as I'm fluffing the other ones, I have to go back and readjust some of the ones that I did previously, but it's okay. There we go. Okay, so now that we did the black and the polka dot, we're back to the stripe and the solid. We're rotating the pattern again. We want equal distribution throughout our wreath of all of our colors. And here is something that I forgot to mention, and I forgot to mention it on all my wreaths. Um, on the bottom, you notice that when we did the pattern, the prominent ribbons, the black love and the striped, we only did three sections of those. So. Um, one here, one here, and one here. Those three sections are evenly spaced out on the bottom. So when I'm coming in here and I'm doing the top layer of ribbon, I want to make sure that I place those ribbons. So I, my black is the most prominent and showing on the bottom. I want to make sure that this top layer of black is in between the two there's a black on the bottom. That way we also have even distribution all the way throughout the wreath of those blacks and those prominent ribbons that we want to stand out. Okay, just 
keep doing the same process six times around the top. So we have all of our ribbons in. straight and the polka dots so oops I messed up should have been striped and solid so we'll do the black with the polka dots and then I'll have to go back and fix my mistake sure I keep this in the camera angle when I'm adding it to the wreath. Okay. We have two more sets to go, but I'm going to go back real quick and fix this. doing the same thing when I messed up on the bottom, untwisting it, match up the correct ones, and then re-put them back in there. Now these, I left these on top a little bit longer, so it's going to be a little bit easier for me to fix my mistake. That might be something to keep in mind, you know, cutting them off a little bit longer in case you do have to go back. Allergies are starting to kick in. Get watery eyes. I'll probably through. <laughs> now we have two left. Okay, dot. No. <laughs> Almost did it again. Solid with the striped. We did the black with the polka dot last time. So now we need the red and white striped and the solid. side and squeeze it. Pluck our ribbon so they lay where we want them to and the way we want them to. <laughs> and then we're ready for our last one. down the middle, pinch them together, lay them on. we have that's what it looks like with all of our ribbon tails added and we're ready to add our sign right here in the middle to add the sign 
This one comes with a hole already up here in the top. When you get this from the Dollar Tree, it has a hanger on it, which I cut off prior to our video. Um, so I'm gonna use that hole to attach the top of my sign. And then I used my metal hole punch. Works really great on these wood signs from the Dollar Tree. And I poked a little tiny hole down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna take my red floral wire. It's 26 gauge. I also get this from the Dollar Tree. It's 100, 100 feet, so you get quite a bit for $1.25. And I'm gonna cut off about 12 to 14 inches. I like to give myself a lot of wire to work with because you have to work it down through the mesh, pull it around the wire frame underneath, and then twist it securely. And for me, it's just easier if I use a little bit more wire. And then I'll just cut off the excess afterwards. To put our wire in our sign, just go through the hole that we made, or the one that's already there, whichever's the case. Turn the sign over and pull the wires until they are pretty even in the back. And then we're going to twist them over top of the hole that we made in the back. By keeping our knot in the back of the sign instead of on the edge, it gives it more stability. Just give it a few good twists and then do the same thing on the opposite end. And it looks like I got my wire up to the bottom maybe a little shorter than I like. But it was, it's still long enough to work. Make sure when you do the top, you do the same thing. Twist over top of the hole in the back so that your knot is in the back of your sign, not up here on the edge. Okay, and then we just have to decide where we want to lay this little guy at. I think I'm going to put him just like this. Uh, working down inside the mesh there a little bit. Have this love at his feet. And so once we decide how we want to place him, we'll start. I'm going to start with the bottom and just work down between all the layers of mesh until you find the wire frame underneath. When you wrap your wire around the rings, make sure that you go around two different rings. That also gives you a little more stability than if you just wrap around one of them. Once you get it around the rings, just give it several good twists. I think I do probably 10 to 15 times. Actually, there was plenty of wire there. So then I'm just gonna clip off the extra. And then to protect my door, let's see if I can turn this so you can see. I'm gonna take this extra piece of wire and I'm gonna wrap it around this inside ring. So I'm just gonna just literally just twist it around that ring several times. And when I get to the end here, I'm gonna make sure that I push that end up inside so that this is a smooth edge. That way it will not scratch your door. Okay, and now just situate this guy pushing down so the top is about where I want it to sit. So he's in the middle of the sign. Go all the way down through the two rows of mesh to the wire frame. Now I've got the two pieces of wire through and around the two wire rings, but I just, before I tighten that down, I want to make sure the sign is situated the way I want it and pull any of my mesh out from under the sign that I don't want to be mashed down. Just it all. Some of my little curls. 
got, you know, my top layer got pushed under it. I want those out because I want those to kind of frame around the gnome. So now that I have those the way I want them, I can go ahead and tighten him down. I don't pull my sun real tight because you don't want to sink it clear to the back of your wreath form. Um, but, in, in, you know, depending on what type of design I'm doing, in this case, I'm pulling him down a little bit because I want that top layer of mesh to frame around him. Um, some of my other signs, I leave it floating more on the top. Um, it just depends on really what my sign looks like, what type of design I'm doing, and whether I put it down inside or leave it floating. Okay, I'm twisting that extra wire again. I didn't have much excess, so I didn't have to cut that off, but I'm twisting it and pushing that edge up inside. And then we have a very cute little gnome wreath, all finished. He's adorable. Like I said, these gnomes are very, very, very popular. I think you're either a gnome lover or you're not. I don't really have any gnome decor, but I do think that they're super cute, especially when they have them in the various seasons and holidays. So if anybody has any questions for me, um, just leave them in the comments. Um, thank you for watching me. Thank you, Marley Mar. Um, wanted to remind you that we are going to be drawing live on live video the winner of the wreaths for the giveaway Saturday at 6.30 p.m. So make sure that you tune in. We're going to actually make an Easter wreath um, and we're going to be using a wooden cross sign to make that. It's probably my favorite wreath that I've ever made, which is why I chose to do it on when we did the drawing. Also, if you would please like and share this video, um, it helps me to grow my page. If you're on YouTube, do the same thing. Um, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. I would really appreciate it. And thank you guys for all of your support. You guys have a wonderful evening.